Welcome to today's video. Today I'm making a dream catcher out of some quartz rocks that I found and some blue jay feathers. I also have some dove feathers here, morning dove, but I'm not going to use those. So threading this thing was very difficult. It's a very tiny thing and threads very tiny. So I did that off camera. Also look at this extremely clear one that I found. Well, I didn't find it. Nick found it. But it's so pretty. The clearer the quartz, the more powerful it is, apparently. And then there's also these more like pinkish reddish, I think they're still quartz rocks. So wire wrapping them was the easiest way to get them like attachable to the, the thing. So I went ahead and wrapped all of them. And I was gonna make uh, two or three uh, dream catchers, but I ended up only making one. I might make another one on my own some other time. So these first ones I did slow so that you could watch how I did them. I've been wrapping rocks with wire for about a year now, so I've learned a few tricks. And just to save some time, I sped this up, but you can slow it down if you want to keep watching more in detail about how I wrapped them. Some rocks are very tricky. Some rocks are a little too smooth and they don't have any crevices or they're a weird shape that just keeps trying to slip out of your wire. It's very difficult. The more jagged it is, the easier it is to wrap it. Which is why uh, the first one that I put on this stream catcher is probably the weirdest looking one. And uh, I like how it was wrapped and it's very unique looking. The more confident I am in a wire wrap, the more willing I am to actually put it on a project, especially if it might be moving or something, especially worn as like a necklace where it could very easily slip out if it wasn't secure. Uh, and then wrapping or making the little loop, I just wanted to show you that real quick so that you could see the process. And having more wire is much better than having not enough wire. It makes it a lot more difficult if you have a short wire, but I did most of these off camera. And there's just a lot of little adjustments just to make it look nice. To get these rocks in the spots that I want them, I'm using some thread, which is kind of difficult to work with, but um, you can easily just slip it through the loop and then pull through the two loose ends up through the loop. And then it's very securely attached to the rock, so that's not going anywhere. And then attaching it to the dream catcher, I did a triple knot to make sure that it was not going to break off. And honestly, I probably could have doubled up on the thread to, like, to make sure that it was very secure, but this thread is pretty tough. And originally I planned on putting three or four of these rocks on them, on, on the dream catcher, but they're kind of big and the dream catcher is kind of small, so, well, relative to each other. So I ended up only putting two rocks on, and then I added some feathers, and the feathers were a little weird to put on. I ended up cheating and just using some hot glue to help me. <laughs> Real quick before we get into that, let me know in the comments which you prefer. Would you prefer me speeding up the process and showing everything, or would you prefer me slowing it down so that you can see what I'm doing and then just cutting out the repetitive parts like showing both of these rocks or just showing one and then cutting it out. I wasn't sure what to do so I'm curious what you guys would prefer. So attaching these feathers, I didn't really want them dangling, I didn't want them getting uh, twisted or messed up or anything so I wanted to attach them uh, kind of at a corner where the uh, strings cross over. And so I just started by tucking them in just to see what it looked like, and I didn't like what I started with, so, well, and it wasn't gonna, they weren't gonna stay like that, so I grabbed the hot glue, and then I changed uh, where I put the feathers. Also, I used a big blue jay feather and a small blue jay feather, so I got rid of the small blue jay feather because I preferred how the big blue jay feathers looked. Also, these feathers were found on the ground over a long period of time, far between each other. I just, me and Nick, Nick and I, I should say, just, you know, happened to stumble upon feathers here and there. 
And then we collect them because they're pretty. So I got the feathers in the place that I wanted them, and then to make sure that they were not going anywhere, I put a couple dots of hot glue up in the stem. I considered cutting the stems shorter so that they weren't like sticking out so far, but then the feather wouldn't be whole, you know? So I left the stems. They're probably not even called stems. I should have looked up what they were called, but I didn't think of feather anatomy being an important part of this video, so I didn't look it up earlier. So a quick little Google search about clear quartz. It, I found this website, healingcrystals.com, and what it says about the clear quartz is that extremely popular metaphysically clear quartz is the most versatile healing stone among all crystals. Quartz is the most powerful healing stone of the mineral kingdom, able to work on any condition. Clear quartz is known as the stone of power and amplifies any energy or intention. Clear quartz pr project pr protects against negativity, attunes to your higher self, and relieves pain. And did you know that there's a crap ton of different quartzes? Like amethyst and jasper are quartz. There's all different colors. It's so cool. I would highly recommend looking into it if you're interested in quartz. If you make a dream catcher, tag Samless Creations on social media so that I can see it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a wonderful day and happy crafting.